In the heart of southeastern Georgia is the city of Waycross. Some would say it's known for its southern hospitality and charm, but others may know it as a city that holds one of the most notorious prisons in Georgia. The city seems lovely, but the prison couldn't be more different. We'll be heading down south for our next prison profile, Ware State Prison. Let's get into it. Like always, we'll start by checking out the city of Waycross before moving on to prison facts and figures, then highlighting some notable incidents and inmates. Waycross is a city of 13,942 people. It is the seat of oddly shaped Ware County. Although the area was first settled around 1820, it was incorporated in 1866 as Tobeauville. The name officially changed to Waycross in 1874 due to its location at key railroad junctions, six of which meet at the city. Famed author and conservationist Laura Walker is from Waycross. The nearby Laura Walker State Park is named in her honor, which started as a national park prior to being ceded to the state. In 1948, a B-29 Superfortress would crash near the city. It would result in a major Supreme Court case because the plan had a top secret mission. In US v. Reynolds, the court affirmed the government's right to state secrets privilege. In the frozen food section of many grocery stores across the nation, you will find the Bubba Burger. This frozen burger originated in the area in the 1990s and gained popularity because it didn't shrink when cooked, like most burgers. The city is mentioned in the country rock group International Submarine Band in the song Miller's Cave. The band helped forge the genre in the late 60s and 70s. To the south of the city is the Okafinoki National Wildlife Refuge, which is basically a huge swamp. Nearly 400,000 people visit the refuge on a yearly basis. Like the prison, this also contains a killer, the American alligator, as it is the perfect habitat for them. Waycross is in rural Georgia. Large cities are quite a drive away. Jacksonville, Florida is one and a half hours away, while Savannah, Georgia is over two hours. This is the southern US. The heat and humidity in the summer can be brutal. Highs in the summer are around 94 degrees. If you get through the summer, the winter is very comfortable with highs in the 60s. Ware State Prison is about five miles from the center of Waycross, Georgia. If you are incarcerated here, you may hear the buzz of small planes landing at the Waycross Ware County Airport, which is directly behind the prison. Construction of the facility began in 1989 and was finished in short order, with the prison officially opening in 1990. The mission statement for the prison reads, The Georgia Department of Corrections protects the public by operating safe and secure facilities through the development of professional staff and effective offender management. The prison is designed to have a capacity of 1,530 inmates. In 2021, the facility had an average daily population of 1,126, well under the capacity. The facility houses close security inmates. Georgia DOC notes, these offenders are escape risks, have assaultive histories, and may have detainers for other serious crimes on file. These offenders never leave the prison and require supervision at all times by a correctional officer. The facility employs 225 security staff to maintain this close security level, of which 196 are correctional officers. The main prison area has eight housing units that contain 50 double bunk cells. There is also a 150 bed segregation area. For lower level inmates, there are also limited dorms at this prison. Some of the academic programs offered at this prison include literacy remedial, adult basic education, and general education counseling. While some of the vocational programs offered are upholstery, carpentry, food services, and electronics. The facility has a lifers program for those coping with long-term incarceration. The purpose of this program is to offer interactive programming to assist in guiding personal development along with restoring hope, empowerment, and purpose. As of December 2022, there were 263 men at this prison with life sentences without the possibility of parole. In August 2020, a riot would break out at the facility. The event would be captured on several contraband cell phones, giving us a peek into the madness. The ensuing melee would result in two officers being stabbed and was only gotten under control after non-lethal ammunition was used. It started at 10.45 p.m. and was all over by 1 a.m. The Georgia State Patrol also responded to secure the perimeter of the prison. Several inmates also suffered injuries. A golf cart was set on fire and several windows were broken, but there was no other major damage. A month after the riot, five of the eight housing units were still on lockdown. Following the incident at Ware State Prison, along with reports from other prisons, the Department of Justice announced that they were opening an investigation into the conditions at Ware. 
We'll have to see what, if any, changes will be made following the outcome of their investigation. And yet another cell phone video, which is too gruesome to show on YouTube, a man is slumped over the unit railing and appears to be deceased. The video documents a time frame which reportedly took hours for staff to respond. Although it appears the death was self-inflicted, there was not enough officers to staff the unit to respond in an appropriate time frame. Christina Remlin of the Southern Center for Human Rights said of the incident, I can't imagine a more dramatic illustration of the total crisis of violence and chaos inside our prison system. A problem that I have illustrated time and time again is the shortage of people willing to work in our state prison systems. Georgia is no different. Officer pay in Georgia starts at eighteen twenty-one an hour. Is that worth your life? An article written by The Intercept highlighted the effects on staff and inmates alike. In 2020-2021, there was three murders at the prison. Robert Wilson, Christopher Rawls, and Christopher Gresham were all victims of prison violence. In July 2022, Kyle Strother became another victim of violence. Nicknamed Droopy, I'm guessing due to the appearance of his eyelids, witnesses say he was stabbed while gambling at the prison. Strother was in prison after being convicted of murder, which occurred during a robbery. He and two other females had set up the victim in 2014. He would go on the run and was captured in 2016 by the U.S. Marshals. Before we move on to a couple ill-famed inmates at the prison, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. In 2014, Darius Bottoms would be murdered while he was driving in southwest Atlanta. It was later learned that he was mistaken for a rival gang member. If you're from the Atlanta area, you may recognize the last name. Darius is a nephew of former city councilwoman and mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Bottoms. One of the convicted murderers, Rashad Barber, is housed at Ware State Prison. This was quite the mistake by Barber, as she's one of the most influential people in Georgia and currently works for the Biden administration. I'm guessing all of his appeals won't be going anywhere. Otis Daniels was just 15 years old at the time of his crime in 1998. He would break into the victim's home, shoot her and her daughter. The mother would pass away, but her 16-year-old daughter would survive. He would be convicted and sentenced to life without parole. It looked like his life was over. In 2019, he filed for resentencing following a Supreme Court ruling that said juveniles could not receive life without parole sentences. But in 2021, the U.S. Supreme Court narrowed the scope of that ruling, making it unlikely he would be released given the nature of his crime. Daniels was featured in the TV series Kids Behind Bars on A&E. Our last inmate at Ware State Prison that we will take a look at is Jabri Mathis. Mathis shot and killed a man outside a Northwest Atlanta convenience store during a robbery attempt. While the crime is not much different than most of the murders in the U.S., it's what happened during his attempted apprehension that makes it notable. Mathis was found in a house and surrounded by police. The officer watching the back window, Tommy Williams, saw Mathis crawl out and run except he didn't give chase because he knew the suspect personally and let him get away. The officer was charged in the incident with violation of oath of public office, obstruction of an officer, and hindering apprehension of a criminal. Mathis would be later captured, tried, convicted, and sentenced to 30 years in prison. This was a profile of Ware State Prison by Chasing Crime. Thanks for watching. See you next time.